What is going on? It's my friends, and we're back again for our main classic 2018 new round one, episode three. We had two excellent matches tonight not on this past Wednesday Tony Storm versus Ginny, and the main event of Alice K versus Mia Yim. We had a match that I didn't think anything of between Xia Li and Kaylin Q, which was a great match as well. And then we had Caitlyn's return, which just to me fell flat. It was against Kavita V, which of course they like to mention who was trained by the great Kali, in which it just, it was a match to get Caitlyn back, I guess. It was just to get her feet wet. It was nothing special. It was just definitely of the four matches of this, um, this episode, it was the weakest of the four. Probably why they put this match on first for this set of shows, but you had Caitlyn versus Kavita V. You did get a welcome back chant from the crowd. Running clothesline by Caitlyn, then three leg drops. The V with a backcracker and power slam for a two count. The V with a power slam for another two count. Then a kick to the spine, followed by a the, with a submission on Caitlyn. The V has Caitlyn up, but Caitlyn fights out. Caitlyn with some forearms, then a shoulder tackle. Scoop slam by Caitlyn, then a drop kick. Cannonball in the corner. Spear one, two, three, and Caitlyn wins. And yes, that's how fast that match was over. That match was over. In, I swear, less than 10 minutes. They didn't go, I think they went less than 5 minutes between Kavita V and Caitlyn. Then we move on to Tony Storm versus Ginny. And Tony Storm and Ginny, you could tell that these two work well together. These two, like, I'm watching this match and I'm like, wow. The match that we just had before this with Caitlyn and Kavita V was just like, ugh. That match, the match between Caitlyn and Kavita V felt like a match you would see on Monday Night Raw was SmackDown Live on a weekly basis. Not much there, not much substance, it was just there. This match felt like both of these two women want to be here. Both of these two women are, are fighting to get um, high, like get noticed by WWE, and these two want to win the Mae Young Classic. <clears throat> they lock up. Oh, wait, first off, Tony Storm, of course, you know, before the match, they did it with the Cruiserweight Classic, the Mae Young Classic last year, and the Mae Young Classic this year. They want to, you know, they do the whole handshaking thing. Well, Tony Storm goes for the handshake, and Ginny just slaps her hand away. They lock up, but it's a stalemate between the two. They lock up again, and Storm has Ginny on the ropes. They break. Ginny, sho like, lightly, light li lightly shoves um, Tony Storm, and Tony Storm just looks at her and be like, you know what? And hits her with a little bit bigger shove, and Ginny just falls on her butt. It, it was funny. <sighs> They lock up again, and Jenny gets Storm into the corner. Storm with a wrist lock on Jenny. Jenny then breaks out and hits the Storm, Storm with a forearm. Jenny has got to have some of the hardest forearms in the Mae Young Classic, because every time she would hit Tony Storm with the forearm, you would hear the crack from, from the forearm every time. She then gets hit, and then Jenny gets slapped with a... Um, then Ginny ends up getting slapped, gets a slap for, for her efforts, and then ends up hitting a big boot. Ginny down, then a running hip attack in the corner for Tony Storm. Storm goes to attack, and Ginny moves uh, moves out of the rope into the rope. She like she's in the corner. She puts herself through the rope, so the ref backs her off. Tony Storm. Off. Tony Storm goes to grab, go again. But this time she is caught and dropped onto the middle rope. Middle turnbuckle and she gets a two count. Jenny then as soon as as soon as it's one two kick out, she just gets on and starts ground and pounding on Tony Storm. Jenny stomping away at Storms, but then a snap at Storm Snapman, then a kick to the spine for a two count. Jenny with her foot on Storm's throat, using the ref count of the full ref count to uh, do more damage. Jenny with a suplex for a two count. Jenny working on the shoulder of Storm. Storm's shoulder was a big factor into the rest of this match, even though. It didn't really pay much into the finish, even though, but that is what it is. Storm fights back, but a forearm by Ginny. My word, as I said, Ginny's forearms, she's got some power behind those. You think, remember Regal's power of the punch? Well, Ginny has the power of the forearm. Ginny tosses, tossed into the corner, but she ends up flipping Storm with a Japanese arm drag. I actually had to have Beth Phoenix say Japanese arm drag because I didn't know what to call that. As Storm's leg hit the bottom of turnbuckle for a two count. Back to the injured shoulder by Ginny with an arm lock and Storm gets out for that roll through. Interesting, interesting roll through. Was she had her in an arm lock. She flipped her over her 
Then Storm flipped, like, rolled over her, and then she rolled over again into a pinning combination for a two count. Another form by Jenny knocks Storm for a loop. Jenny rolls through to get a reverse surfboard, which I think that's the call the reverse surfboard, where, um, how do, how do I explain this? Where, like, Storm's on his stomach, and her legs are behind Jenny, and she's pulling on her arms. I think that's a reverse surfboard. With nowhere to go. It lets go Tony Champ from the crowd. Storm, Jenny starts taking her one leg and starts stomping on the back of Storm, but that allows Storm to free. And she gets her ropes. Jenny with some more ground and pound, then some trash talking. I don't know exactly what she said. I think she called her a stupid British um, Australian girl or something. Then she slaps her in the face. Big boot by Storm in the corner. That German suplex by Storm. Hits the running hip attack in the corner. Storm Zero, which I'm pretty sure the Storm Zero that she used at the um, UK tournament or the UK shows um, back in July was not the Storm Zero she used here. She used a Tiger Driver here, and they called it the Storm Zero. But the Storm Zero gets the one, two, and three for Tony Storm, who moves on to the second round. So, yes, great match between these two. I would love to see. Jenny, because these guys are both part of UK, WWE UK, I would love to see Tony Storm versus Jenny with the Women's Championship for the new UK on the line, because after this match here, I'm pretty sure these two would bring it twice as hard as they did on Wednesday with the title on the line. I'm pretty sure both of these women are in the UK tournament for the Women's Championship whenever that tournament airs, because the Winner of that tournament is going to be at Evolution. Karen Q versus Zia Lee. This match to me again was one of those that's like, oh, I don't know who either one of these two are, and I don't know if I'm really going to care about these because usually when you have like someone from another country like Kavita the V, no one really cares about her. She doesn't have anything to offer. Zia Lee was in last year's Mayan Classic. She took on Mercedes Martinez last year and was just there to have Mercedes Martinez win a match. This time she actually got to show a little bit more of what she could. Do. These two, Karen Q is Jap is of Chinese descent, but she is born in the United States, whereas Zia Li is from China. So both of these, instead of shaking hands, they bow and then get into some like get into some kung fu poses. And <sighs> Lee catches Q with um, something and knocks her down, but Q keeps up. They bow again, but Q this time goes over and slaps Lee in the face, so that this that respect's gone. Lee is pissed off now, and she beats the hell out of Q in the corner, who comes out of the corner with a boot, and now a ground and pound, a ground and pound by Q on Lee, who then gets up and does another like respect pose, but mocking this time. Lee um, mocks Lee before shoving her in the corner. Q then with a couple backflips, but followed by a back forearm, which was pretty cool in the lean. Q then goes from one goes to the other side and hits a running um running back elbow, then a running boot from two corners that connect to the one that she was in. Exploder suplex for a two count. Q Q goes for a Boston crab, but Zia Lee spins out of that. And instead of, you know, spinning and falling on her um back, Q actually her hands and does a handstand and hits a and hits Lee with a boot. This match was actually pretty, was a lot more fun than I, like, I thought it was, like, too unknown, somebody, like, nobody, like, big here, I know Zia Lee didn't last year, and I was like, this match is just gonna be probably one of those throwaway matches that nobody's gonna talk about after it's done and over with. This match was actually, I think, fun as can be to watch. Suplex by Q stop, which, like, attempt by Q was stopped by Lee, but Q catches Lee with a full Nelson slam for a two count. Lee fights out of the headlock. Lee ducks an axe handle and hits a couple stiff um, kicks to the thigh of Q. Lee shoves down Q, then a super kick with a heel, like a super kick, and then she does what a, a, a spin kick, misses the first one, but then hits her with the back of her heel on her other foot. And I'll tell you what, though, a kick to the head is one thing, but when you get hit with that heel, yeah, it's probably going to hurt a little bit more. Q ends up hitting a Samoan drop, who goes up top for a frog splash. She misses. The frog splash, but she got some elevation, I will say. The frog splash, it's always like everyone looks at oh how far they get. She got up pretty high, so 
definitely probably that's probably her favorite show is a frog splash. He missed it. Um Allison uh, not Allison Kay, um um Zaya Lee. If anyone's ever watched Will Ospreay wrestle, he does that spinning that spinning kick that he does that like he he spins around and ends up landing his foot on you. Well, that's what she did. They called it the spin the flipping axe kick. Flipping axe kick by Zia Lee. One, two, three, and Zia Lee is your winner. After the match, and I thought this was pretty cool to finish it, they bow again to each other and then they hug. So just like it's one thing to like they had they had Dan Q slap Zia Lee because they wanted her to play the the heel for the match, but in the end, these two show respect to each other. Moving on here, we have the main event of this show, and this was by far, I think, the best match of the tournament. I know people are going to say Killer Kelly versus Miko Satomura was a better match, but this match, to me, there was so much story behind this match. This match goes, the, the beginnings of this match and the story behind this match goes back to 2012, where Mia Yim and Allison Kay wrestled their first match against each other, and Mia Yim broke Allison Kay's nose. You broke her nose, and these two have been on again, off again rivals since then. And you could tell in this match that these two don't have a like Reddit hate for each other, but they have that rivalry. They called it frenemies, but friendly rivals on commentary. But you could tell that these two have beef with each other, and it just showed. When two people, whether you're rat, male, female, whatever, have chemistry in the middle of the ring, you get something special. And this match felt special. <sighs> Instead of shaking hands, they have a just a like a stare down with their eyes that if looks can kill, Mia Yim and Allison K would have killed everybody watching this match. They lock up and they end up in the ropes they brawl trading ground and pound on the mat one starts rounding they flip over you know that stuff mia yim does get this around and ends up looking for the arm bar but uh, allison k gets into the ropes mia yim gets tossed in the ropes and does the um tranquilo as um you would see with um andrade c and almas tranquilo's pose she drops out as allison k runs to her allison k ends up on the outside mia yim then Hits her with a PK and it looked, it hurt. Just a nice PK on the chest, definitely had to hurt. Back in and she grabbed the pounds and gets a two count. Yim goes for a German and K stops that, flips her around and ends up, K ends up hitting a pounce on Yim, sending her to the outside. K with a couple attacks on the outside, but she tosses her back in and Yim kicks K as K is trying to come back in as well. Kicks K. Then she goes up and runs and hits a suicide dive. She sets K up on the ring post. And I don't like this. I hate this. Like, they showed it three or four times in this match. And it made me cringe every time. She puts, she has Allison K on the ring post on the outside. Goes for a chop. Allison K moves. And there's nothing but steel right there. So, Allison K gets hit. Like, misses. Like moves and Mia Yim hits that thing full force and you can just hear ting. Tell to anybody who watches professional wrestling, anybody who sits there and denies professional wrestling is semi real. Go find a metal pole and just take your hand and slap it and tell me that don't hurt because that thing definitely had to hurt. K then attacks the hand and then drops um K um, Yim on the bat, bat, on the apron. She throws it back inside and gets a two count. K with a stomp in the corner, ref gets her out of there. K with a kick to the gut of Yim, then uses Yim's own hair. He actually took Yim's hair and wrapped it around her throat and started choking her. Then uses, then does a fall away slam. And I don't know if they made him say it, but when Allison K did a fall away slam, Michael Cole, for whatever reason, said JBL would be proud. I don't want to hear anything like that. Leave that out of here. K clamps both hands on Yim for some damage, but she like one on the head, one on the chin, and she's just like twisting her. Yim gets out, and Yim looks for an armbar, but K gets out of them, lifts her into a power bomb, even though they said a, bat, a spine buster power bomb for a two count. K starts shoving Yim down over and over again, but then Yim twists around and gets her into a heel hook, but K falls right into the rope, so nothing she can do about that. 
Overhead kick blocked by Kim by K. Kim then blocks a kick to the head. And then both women just like mad because they're like blocking each other get forehead to forehead. They start shoving each other, they start shading trading shots, and Yim with a slap to K's face who then hits a boot to Yim. Both women are down. Drop kick from Yim, then a second one, then a third one, then a fourth one off the top rope with a missile drop kick for a two count. Then Mia Yim looks like she's going for a package pile driver, but K gets out of that. And K gets Yim up, and Yim turns it into a code red for count they call it the sunset foot bomb but i'm pretty sure that is code red beautiful looking sequence chopped by him eat and goes for the eat defeat but that is blocked by k hits her with a clothesline but only gets a two count both miss a kick then kick each other in the head both women down yim goes up top k stops her goes up for a suplex superplex yim headbutts her down hey this this was a perfect way i love the way they ended this match Yim still on the top rope. K just got knocked down. She runs to attack her again, but Mia Yim grabs her arm and off the top rope hits a super eat the feet for the one, two, three. Mia Yim moves on and one of the best ends to a match I think I've seen in May Young Classic. That was absolutely awesome to see that. And that is this episode of Mae Young Classic, we are four, super, uh, four women away from the next round, which will be in two weeks, of course, and then after that, we have that. So, make sure to find me on Twitter at TheFrance, find me on Twitch.tv slash TheFrance08. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of each and every one of these matches. In my opinion, Caitlyn versus Kavita the Beat was an absolute snore fest, and I hope you didn't fall asleep because... All the other matches on this show were excellent. This is definitely what Karen Q, what, not, what Zia Lee, Tony Storm, Mia Yim, and I guess Caitlyn too do in the next round. We won't have to wait and see in about two or three weeks, depending on when their matches air. But for now, my name is Franz. I will see you guys tomorrow for Unscripted. We have a lot to talk about Rey Mysterio, Shawn Michaels, and much, much more. Until then, I'm getting out of here, and I'll see you guys later.